Good morning. This is Dr. Vikram, today's moderator, Dr. Ivar. Topic of for today's discussion is blood and blood products transfusion and its complication. Coming to the topic, the types of blood products that we use uh, in hospitals usually are uh, the first, the most common are packed diabetes, then followed by whole blood, platelet concentrate, fresh flows and plasma, cryoprecipitates and plasma derivatives. Coming to whole blood, whole blood uh, mostly has a better oxygen carrying capacity and used for volume expansion. It's mostly used for acute hemorrhages, mostly traumatic uh, uh, loss of blood loss of more than 25%. Uh, it is usually stored at uh, 4 degrees Celsius to maintain erythrocyte viability. Longer we, longer or older the whole blood uh, sample, uh, the uh, whole blood sample, 2-3 BPG levels fall and uh, hence it causes increased O2 affinity uh, to the hemoglobin molecule and hence lesser the delivery of oxygen and hemoglobin to the tissue. Uh, so whole blood is usually used in emergency settings and preferably a fresh, um, fresh uh, unit of whole blood is transfused for better understanding. Packed RBCs stored at 4 degrees Celsius up to 35 to 42 days helps increase oxygen carrying capacity in anemic patients. Decision to transfuse to be guided by clinical situation, not by arbitrary laboratory value. Uh, mostly we maintain a hemoglobin, target hemoglobin of 8 grams per deciliter in most conditions. There are some patients who are allergic to some components of uh, packed RBC and this patients we would prefer leukocyte reduced uh, PRBCs which will reduce reactions and also help uh, reduce uh, allo immunizations. Platelet concentrates, th thrombocytopenia uh, is the risk uh, which is a risk factor for hemorrhage. Uh, hence, in these conditions, we use platelet concentrate, but not for all patients. There are some indications. Platelet concentrations concentrates are stored uh, up to four to five to seven days at 20 to 24 degrees Celsius, which should be in a permanent motion. Uh, threshold for prophylactic transfusion is 10,000 unit microliter per microliter. Uh, up to 5,000 per microliter prevents spontaneous bleeding uh, usually and 50,000 uh, per microliter for elective procedures. Transfused, usually transfused as pools, 4 to 6 random uh, donor uh, platelet concentrate or if it is a single donor uh, one, we can go for a single or a double, only two units, which will be more effective. Uh, two units of random donor uh, platelet concentrate can increase up to 10,000 counts per microliter. Risk of alloimmunization uh, is present in usually in uh, platelet concentrates. So we must uh, usually uh, avoid massive transfusions uh, of platelets because due to allo immunization the effectiveness of the transfusion doesn't improve. Uh, so to calculate uh, uh, possibility of massive transfusion or, and to keep it on check we usually uh, use a formula for it wherein CCI uh, is calculated by using a post transfusion concentration and pre transfusion concentration of platelet uh, minus and which is divided by number of platelets transfused. And based on the value, we can decide on how many platelets to uh, transfuse. Fresh frozen plasma contains coagulation factors and place plasma proteins. FFP cannot be routinely used. There are some particular indications wherein we correct coagulopathies or if you are planning to supply deficient plasma proteins or in cases of uh, diseases like antibody mediated thrombocytin. Uh, fresh frozen plasma is a pla cellular component, hence uh, very few infections spread through fresh frozen plasma and uh, allergies and reactions are very few and far. Uh, there are different types of other uh, alternatives to fresh frozen plasma like the pre thawed one or something called a never frozen plasma or an IgA deficient plasma in uh, people who have uh, IgA deficiency. Coming to cryoprecipitate contains fibrinogen factor 8 and volume brand factors ideal for supplying fibrinogen to low uh, volume sensitive patients who are mostly in fluid overload or cannot go for a massive transition. 
it also can be used as an alternative for a factor 8 concentrate which is very hard uh, to get in our country so one unit of precipitate will give you 80 units of factor 8 it also is used as a as alternate to von willebrand factor deficiency patient especially the type 2 uh, and the type 3 von willebrand disease uh, other uses other blood products that you use generally are the plasma derivatives, plasma concentrates including albumin, intravenous immunoglobulins, antithrombins, and co other coagulation factors are used. Uh, hyperimmune globulins like anti D, anti sera, and hep B, uh, varicella zoster, virus, cytomegalovirus, and other infectious agents nowadays it's COVID 19. Uh, these plasma derivatives are used. Adverse reactions to blood transfusions are very common and we will be uh, dealing with it now. Uh, there are three types of adverse reactions, immune mediated, non immunologic reactions and infectious complications. Immune mediated, there are different types. The first one is an acute hemolytic transfusion wherein the preformed antibodies that lyse donor erythrocytes. Here the anti A or anti B are mostly seen. Sometimes RH, Kelly and Duffy are also responsible for vital complications. Uh, usually, uh, acute hemolytic transfusion uh, reactions uh, present as hypotension, hemoglobinuria, chest or flank pain and discomfort at the infusion site. When we suspect transfusion uh, reactions, we must uh, stop the transfusion. The IV axis should not be removed, it must be maintained and the reaction should be remote, reported immediately with the blood bank. And uh, what we should do is we should take a post-transfusion blood of the patient and untransfused blood which is left to analysis to see why what is the cause of the reaction. So the investigation that will aid us in seeing the amount of damage caused through this uh, reaction is serum haptoglobin, LDH and indirect bilirubin to see the uh, complications of the life. Usually RBC lysis occurs when uh, in these conditions which can cause renal failure. So the treatment is IV fluids with diuresis. Next is the tissue factor that is released in this reaction could help uh, cause uh, DIC. Uh, uh, mostly these sort of uh, complications occur because of uh, errors such as mislabeling the sample or transfusing wrong patient. Hence we must check before and after transfusion. We must check uh, all the labelings and cross verify the blood samples and the units which we get. We also must monitor vitals uh, during the transfusion and before and after also. Now coming to the delayed hemolytic and serological transfusion reactions, DHTRs are easily called, seen in previously sensitized patients to RBC allo antigens with negative allo antibody screen due to low antibody levels. Seen one or two weeks after transfusion, no special treatment required is something called delayed serological transfusion reaction that is similar to delayed hemolytic transfusion reaction, just that the DAT is increased in both, but the RBC clearance is decreased in DSTF. There is one more called fibrin non hemolytic transfusion reaction. It is the most common uh, reactions associated with transfusion. Uh, chills and rigor uh, with rise in temperature greater than 1 degree Celsius is most commonly seen in such episodes. So This happens due to antibodies that are directed to donor leukocyte and HLA antigen. Uh, so to prevent it, we may use leukocyte reduced blood products. Cytokines and chemokines in platelet uh, components are also causative factors for this febrile non hemolytic transfusion reaction. Allergic reactions uh, caused by protein in blood components. Mild reaction treated by stopping transfusion and treating symptomatically. Transfusion to be completed once the signs resolve. No need to discard the uh, uh, blood product. Uh, usually if you know there is history of such allergies before or any other significant allergic reactions before, we can give pre-medications to such patients. Uh, cellular components can be washed to remove the residual plasma in usually sensitized patients to avoid allergic reactions. Something called anaphylactic reactions which are more severe form. Even few ml of blood product can cause anaphylactic reactions. Symptoms mostly range from difficulty breathing, coughing, nausea, vomiting, hypotension, bronchospasm, loss of consciousness, respiratory arrest and shock. So immediately we have to stop transfusion, maintain vascular access, administer epinephrine. Sometimes glucocorticoids also may be required. 
to avoid such anaphylactic reactions, we can go for IgA deficient plasmas and washed blood components. Next is a very dreadful disease called graft process host disease. GVHD is a complication in usually uh, people who have undergone allogenic stem cell transplantation uh, where the lymphocytes uh, attack uh, these, uh, uh, the host and the host does not have any immunity to fight it. So symptoms or signs will be cutaneous eruptions, diarrhea and liver function abnormalities. In, uh, in addition to these, some patients will also have a, a classical marrow ablation and pancytopenia. So usually, uh, uh, graft, uh, graft versus host disease uh, is uh, with transfusion associated is highly resistant to treatment of immunosuppressant therapies. The clinical manifestation after usually after eight to ten days of transfusion, death occurs within three to four weeks. It can be prevented by radiation of cellular component, minimum of uh, 2,500 grams. At risk are fetus with intrauterine transfusions who require intrauterine transfusion, selected immunocompetent patients and immunocompromised recipients of donor units with blood relatives and recipients who have undergone marrow transfusion. So it is advised that you avoid transfusion uh, donors who or blood relatives and who have already undergone marrow transfusion because they are at high risk of graft process. Transfusion related lung injury, which is very common transfusion uh, lung injury and the most common cause of fatalities in transition patients. Symptoms uh, range from hypoxia, signs of non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema uh, which develop during or within 6 hours of transition. Treatment is supportive and most require without sequelae. Mostly due to transition of donor plasma that contains high titer of anti-HLA class 2 antibodies recipient leukocytes. So here you can uh, confirm your diagnosis by testing the anti-HLA antibodies in the donor's plasma. Most commonly seen in multi-parous women. Risk factor includes smoking, chronic alcohol, use uh, shock, liver surgery patient usually transplant, post-transplant, mechanical ventilation most than, more than 30% oxygen requirement, positive fluid balance patients, post-transmission purpura, present 7 to 10 days post-plant platelet transmission mostly seen in women. It is a delayed thrombocytopenia due to production of antibodies from both donor and recipient platelets. Additional transmission only can worsen so hence to be avoided. Treatments are mostly IV immunoglobulin that neutralize antibodies or plasmaphoresis which can remove the antibodies. Next you, uh, thing is alloimmunization wherein the recipient becomes alloimmunized to cellular blood components and plasma proteins. Usually seen in women of childbearing age are, uh, and who uh, end up with hemolytic disease of newborn. Leukocyte redu reduce cellular components as well as limiting antigen exposure by judicious use of transfusion can prevent. So there is a next set which are non-immunogenic reactions which are fluid overload, uh, hypothermia, electrolyte toxicity, ion overload, hypotensive reactions and immunomodulations. Fluid overload generally uh, blood components are excel excellent volume uh, expanders and when you transfuse quickly, uh, quickly uh, in patients we can cause transfusion associated circulatory overload that's called TACO. These patients will have dyspnea with O2 saturation less than 90% at room. They may also have bilateral infiltrates in chest x uh, and also will have uh, uh, other complications like breathlessness and may require uh, ventilation oxygen support. We can confirm this diagnosis by brain uh, doing a BNP brain natriuretic peptide. So usually elevated. elevated. Uh, these patients may require monitoring of rate and volume during transition and we have to may require diuretics with, to minimize this problem. Next comes hypothermia. Usually refrigerated blood components are kept at 4 degrees Celsius, sometimes frozen at minus 18. Uh, so when we rapidly use them without warming to the uh, room temperature, patient may have hypothermia and end up with chills and fever and other complications. Uh, and sometimes dysthymias uh, dis can also result exposing a sinoatrial node to cold fluid. Use of inline warmer can prevent complications. Next coming to electrolyte toxicity, RBC leakage during storage increases the concentration of potassium in the unit. Neonates and patients in renal failure are at risk of hyperkalemia. So preventive measures such as using fresh or washed RBCs are wanted to neonatal transfusions because of complications can be fat. Citrate most commonly used in anticoagulant blood components. Uh, 
uh, chelates calcium and thereby inhibits the coagulation cascade. So hypocalcemia manifested by circumoral numbness, tingling sensation of fingers and toes may result from multiple transfusions. Because citrate quickly metabolizes to bicarbonate and calcium infusion is seldom required in this setting. If calcium or any other intravenous infusion is necessary, it must be given through a separate line, not through the same line where blood transfusion is done. Next comes iron overload, which is very common in massive transfusions or common in patients of uh, thalassemia and other uh, inborn errors of, uh, during birth. Each unit of RBC usually contains 200-250 mg of iron. The signs and symptoms of iron overload, affective endocrine, hepatic and cardiac function are common with transfuse more than 100 units of RBCs uh, in your lifetime. Then uh, preventing such complications are alternative therapies like erythropoietin or judicious transfusion uh, and avoiding unnecessary un uh, transfusions. You can use even chelating agents such as steps for oxamine or decifer defesirox. Uh, but the response to these drugs are very suboptimal. Next, hypotensive reactions. Transient hypotension is very common in during transfusion. It is due to the angiotensin converting enzyme uh, tablets or uh, drugs which people take. They are more at risk. Since blood products contain bradykinin that is normally degraded by AC, uh, patient on AC inhibitors may have increased bradykinin levels that cause hypotension. So definitely we should ask any patients who need transfusion that they are on AC inhibitors. But uh, not much intervention is required. Uh, it never runs normally. Immunomodulation. Transfusion of allogenic blood is immunosuppressive. So multiple transfusions, uh, renal transplant patients are less likely to reject the graft. Transfusion may result in poorer outcomes in cancer patients and increase the risk of infections. Transfusion related immunomodulation is thought to be mediated by transfused leukocytes. Leukocyte depleted cellular products may cause uh, less immunosuppression though control data are unlikely to show such uh, stuff in uh, infectious complications that we commonly see are hepatitis c in viral complications are hepatitis c hiv type 1 in particular hepatitis b these are all common and other hepatitis virus like uh, a which is rarely transmitted e is also seen uh, cytomegalovirus is also seen and it is very ubiquitous virus more than 50 percent of uh, blood uh, transfusion, PRBC transfusions or platelet components are uh, uh, viral infections are mostly cytomegalovirus. Uh, next comes uh, HTLV virus type 1. Uh, it's also seen and in, uh, in, uh, implicated in uh, viral infection secondary to blood transfusion. Parvovirus B19 is also commonly seen. It's usually uh, seen in uh, uh, erythroid precursors and inhibits erythrocyte production and maturation. So you get more pure red cell aplasia in patient post transfusion. You have to think about uh, fetus who are zero negative women are at risk of developing hydrops from this virus. Next, bacterial infections are not very common. Uh, usually nowadays due to poor techniques also it can increase. Most common uh, infections that we see uh, in bacterial infections uh, are uh, uh, the Gram negative ones like Arsenia, Pseudomonas, Serratia, Cynotobacter, Escherichia species, which are more common in PRBC transmission, and coagulase negative staph is seen in platelet counts. Other infectious agents that we usually see during transitions are malaria, Babesiosis, Tagus disease, Dengue virus, Zika virus, CJD, yellow fever, and even now COVID also is one of them. Uh, now coming to the last one, alternatives to transmission where we can judiciously avoid transfusion and transfusion <coughs> due to uh, related infections are uh, the one thing is autologous transfusion wherein the patient's own blood uh, can be used to uh, treat the patients so you can avoid immunological infection and infections that attract through getting some other patient's blood but uh, autolo uh, autologous blood transfusion is a very complicated and costlier method the cost benefit ratio of our uh, autologous transfusion remains very high uh, so uh, it is only used in uh, very limited settings uh, the next thing is gcsf and gmcsf that is granulocyte colony stimulating factor and granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factors which are uh, clinically useful to hasten leukocyte recovery in patients with leukopenia related to high dose chemotherapy 
We can also see the usage of erythroblastin in day-to-day -day life, which can treat anemia, a chronic disease, and reduce the usage of transfusion and complications. Nowadays, we also use gene therapy to patients who are having sickle cell disease or major thalassemias, which also will dramatically reduce the transfusion and its complication. New studies going and uh, are being done on stem cell derived blood cells such as RBC and platelet, which will uh, maybe in future become a suitable alternative to very rare blood donors like the Bombay blood group. Lastly, the optimizing of use of blood products through patient blood management and programs can improve the therapeutic index of transition medicine. So judiciously use blood transition, blood product transition and avoid uh, complications. Thank you.